Okay, getting the day started a little bit later than I planned, but beautiful weather, a little bit of a wind and a breeze, uh, but really nice day. Let's uh, go testing out some new gear. Let's go for a powder. <laughs> So paddling out here on this lake this time of year, this time of day, it's around noon, uh, my biggest concern, besides power boats, is lightning. Uh, lightning is problematic and is concerning in areas where it's frequent, and it's pretty frequent here. We've had lightning just about every day for the past week, uh, and so the weather today looked pretty good, but uh, a little concerned at what I'm seeing, and the last time I was here, this happened. Did you see it? Heard it? As when I got on the water, I said to myself, it looks like it's, they didn't call for it, but it looks like it. I'll start heading back, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about lightning uh, and sort of what to be concerned about and uh, what to do if you hear it or see it. I guess you don't hear lightning, you hear thunder. Uh, if you hear thunder or see lightning, what to do? Um, let's get some sort of basic facts right now back in the van. Okay, here are some interesting lightning facts. Uh, lightning used to be taught as part of the WFA course that I teach, uh, and it was removed during COVID to sort of, they rearrange things a little bit and they got rid of lightning and altitude, which a lot of people are upset about. Before I taught wilderness medicine, I had to recertify my wilderness first responder, just like everyone else. And every two years I would do that. And it was super frustrating because every two years, the lightning curriculum changed. They could not decide on things that checked out scientifically. So they would teach things and then realize they didn't check out scientifically. And then they would teach things and then they would realize they didn't check out scientifically. And one year, uh, the instructors even said, we're not teaching lightning just because they're about to change it. And so we don't want to teach it if they're about to change it. Now that I'm an instructor, I realize they might have just done that to save some time, but it, it made sense and it does sort of make sense. Okay, if you are outside in a lightning storm, your first choice is a modern building or a vehicle. Like an AT shelter is not really doing much for you, except it is protecting you from the wind and the rain, uh, which is honestly more likely to injure you um, in terms of like hypothermia or a branch or a tree falling on you than the lightning itself. Although I will say the odds of getting struck by lightning are surprisingly good. One in 36,000 exposed individuals get struck by lightning. An exposed individual is someone who is outside who can hear thunder or see lightning. So one in 36,000, those are pretty good odds. Think about the odds of the lottery. Okay, so in a best case scenario, you hear thunder but don't see lightning. Probably means it's fairly far away, but that might not really mean that you're safe. Uh, the vast majority of folks that get struck by lightning, uh, it's usually by a storm that's pretty far away, uh, in excess of like 30 miles. So you can try and figure out if you do see flash and bang, you can try and figure out how far away it is. You count seconds between the two and then divide by five. So if you count 10 seconds between flash and bang, uh, divide by five, that means the storm is two miles away which is very close. If you are counting less than 30 seconds, you are in a danger zone. Uh, so the next question becomes, what do I do if I'm out paddling like this and I hear thunder or see lightning? And the answer is get off the water. Most people that get injured by lightning don't get injured by the actual lightning itself, but by a blast injury. This is Brett from the future and that was wrong. Most people that get injured by lightning get injured by ground strike, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute. So the, tr the lightning hits a tree, which explodes. You could get a massive heating of air, which can create just like a bomb going off a huge pressure wave. So you can damage ears, damage eyes, damage lungs, all of those things. Um, 
you can also get shrapnel from the tree that is exploding or whatever is exploding and bits of wood and stuff like that impacting your body. Super bad. So if I were trying to get off the water, if you paddle already, you know that the world is not lined with beautiful beaches. Uh, frequently, it's lined with stuff like this. So I might try to get into a place like this. This is far from ideal, um, but our goal, if we were just on land, our goal would be uh, in a forest of trees of a uniform height. So I am sort of in the forest. The problem is that I am still on the water. And most people that get injured by lightning strike get injured by ground current. So the lightning strikes over there travels through the ground and up into me. On land, that'll move, the, light, the electricity will move around 50 or 60 feet. On water, it can move up to 600 feet. So a lightning strike all the way over there is enough to endanger me here, but I can't really get off the water here because this is what the shoreline looks like. So not ideal, but I might do this to wait out the storm and let it move past. When you are on land, if you're in a group, you should spread that group out so that if there is a ground strike, you're less likely to have that whole group get hurt. Where I don't want to be is out here, where I am the tallest thing for quite a ways. Uh, I am a moving target waiting to be struck by lightning. So do not be in the middle of whatever body of water you're on. That is bad. Okay, this is far better. Here I can get into the trees, get away from the water. I'd probably pull my boat up a little bit further than I just did, but this is a much better place to be and to wait it out. <sighs> much better place to be. Okay, so that's my plan. I'm gonna sit down here, hunker, wait for the storm to pass. So I would wait in the trees till I'm 30 minutes thunder and lightning free. Uh, then we can get back on the water. And that's how I would handle, that's big fish just jumped. That's how I would handle lightning while I'm paddling. Let's go back to the van and uh, talk about some other things. So because no one could really decide on lightning and there wasn't great lightning research, Knowles actually decided to do a bunch of research on its own. And that's where a lot of this information is coming from, the Knowles Lightning Curriculum for the WFA. And Knowles published a really good book on called Lightning, fittingly, uh, that is, is super good, which is also where a lot of this information is based from. Okay, that's all I've got for you on lightning, but I've got something else for you. If you like instructor or outdoor guide tips and tricks and things like that, I've got two new products on the sh in the shop at Coffee. So there's a link down below. If you go to the shop, you will see two different sort of mini books. They are 16 pages each. They are called The Guides Way, and it's over 100 tips and tricks. One is outdoor specific, one is sea kayaking specific. There is very little overlap between the two. They are $5.99 in the coffee shop, uh, and they're gonna stay that price until the end of the summer when I'm gonna move them over to to Amazon and then the price will go up. So I wanted my folks, the folks that watch this channel, to have first dibs at that at a good price, a relatively inexpensive price. They'll probably go to eight or nine or 10 bucks once I head over to Amazon because Amazon, Amazon takes 70%. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this, if this worked for you, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. You can always support me down on coffee by buying me a cup of coffee. Links down below. My books are on Amazon. I'll see you on the water.